Hello everyone and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program 1.6 with Kerbalism. In this episode we hope to fly by the moon because now we have the, these solar panels so our spacecraft is not going to run out of power. Otherwise this is the moon one rocket that you saw in the previous episode except that I added uh, extra ton of fuel here. It used to be a one ton tank, now it's a two ton tank. Now I did something completely wrong in the previous episodes, episode one and episode two, and I've only been able to get to some of the comments on episode one in this video because um, I already recorded episode two before you guys all had a chance to comment on episode one. And one thing that was mentioned was that I was supposed to have community resource pack in, and I didn't have that in the first two episodes. So now things make a whole lot more sense because when we right click on here, we have food, water, and oxygen. And now, okay, that, that I'm familiar with. Of course, uh, that's, uh, that's you know, familiar ground. And now we have food here. And uh, you guys told me about this little heartbeat thing, and I know we can change the target situation here, and the target body there, and sunlight there. Uh, so this is a nice little dialogue. Mm, and of course, somewhere around here is radiation. There it is. Uh, so yeah, and then that's high orbit radiation. It doesn't really have like uh, radiation belt radiation, but anyway. So okay, I'm coming to grips with that, and we'll see how that goes. Uh, as far as how much food, water, and oxygen we have, it says we have five days of food, and uh, basically it's five days. So I think, uh, wow, it's got ammonia, I suppose, for coolant. But uh, yeah, so five days should be able to handle a trip to the moon, I hope. Unless I'm not... I think that's right. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, so we will see. We've got all this business and yeah now now we've got real Kerbalism going so let's let's see how that does we'll um, both Jeb and Val have about the same experience so we'll just send Jeb out first I think Val has a little bit more max sustainable G so maybe she's done a little bit more uh, though their logs say that they both have just orbit around Kerbin anyway let's get to it Okay, so here we are, and this dialogue, if we click on the name, we see that information there. And uh, I, I mentioned that in the second episode, but I didn't have everything in because I didn't have community resource pack. So yeah, SAS on, throttle is up, and well, let's get to work first. Let me throttle down the main engine. I haven't put MechJeb in yet, though somebody mentioned that MechJeb 1.5 is compatible with 1.6. I plan to do that. I probably won't use Kerbal Engineer because I'm more familiar with MechJeb anyway, and it has like the transfer window planner function. So, uh, part of my interest in Kerbalism is not just uh, making sure it's adapted to realism overhaul properly, but also remember that I do make my own parts. And so I need to come to grips with it so that I can make sure that my parts may be Kerbalism compatible if I make capsules, for instance. And I do intend to make my own spacecraft, and I would like to have radiation shielding modeling on my spacecraft. I especially want to make sort of a competitor to the Orion spacecraft, and just design it from the ground up with all the details. So that's something I'm thinking about. But yeah, since I do you know, make parts every now and again for Kerbal Space Program. It's important for me to know about certain mods. And as far as adapting it to realism overhaul, uh, again, it has an RSS configuration to add the radiation belts. Oh, and uh, was it, does this body info be here? Uh, I forgot what the key was to show the radiation belts in, in the, uh, maybe it's only in the tracking station or is it in the map view? Maybe it's in the map view, but I just don't remember the key. But yeah, um, as far as adapting it to realism overhaul, and we're go for, oh, go for staging. We have a few things that we, we might need to fix. Some of the tanks uh, need to be a modular fuel tank. The way the fuel cells work uh, probably doesn't uh, jive with how fuel cells work in realism overhaul. Uh, the, the whole power system is sort of a little bit different. It's measuring more strictly in kilowatts in realism overhaul than it does in stock. 
and um, like uh, it, it tried uh, to make one thing compatible with real fuels and that's the suit fuel, the mod propellant in the Kerbal suits, it changed to hydrazine. But I don't think they would use hydrazine. I think they would probably use nitrogen thrusters on on any sort of jetpacks for the Kerbals. So probably I would actually change that to nitrogen and we'll have to take a look at the stats on that. So stuff like that. There's all sorts of little things, but taking a look at the configurations on the Kerbalism, there's a lot of configurations and so it might be reasonably transparent to take care of uh, the changes that might need to be made to make sure that works properly with realism overhaul. Now we haven't unlocked flight planning. We haven't uh, gotten the ability to create maneuver nodes or selecting a target. Since I'm doing, I've started two career modes at the same time. I've got a new career mode in realism overhaul and I've got this one. I've got to remember which upgrades we have where, right? Uh, I've got the tracking s uh, station upgrade in the realism overhaul one, but not here. Okay, I, I don't think I actually need to make a full orbit. If I'm right, I can just burn at Apoapsis to head directly to the moon here. A typical burn for the moon takes about 800 to 900. We've got 1,648, so we've got margin. We are getting more electric charge. So that's good. Jeb can point at prograde. Okay, um, let's burn. I don't know if it's going to show us the encounter or not. Probably not. I might be doing this too close to the moon. We'll see. The typical so rule of thumb is to do the burn when the moon is peeking up above the horizon. And I think I might have done it early. So, I mean, we could go a little bit faster like that. Signal loss of moon one. Okay, well, we weren't using data transmission anyway. Okay, we have a moon encounter. Is it close enough? Yeah, uh, well, that's science data from space around Kerbin. Uh, explore the moon. Yep, we got the explore the moon contract done. First flyby of the moon and everything. We don't have any other contracts relevant to this. Let's get some science. So log temperature, keep because of course we can't transmit. Log radiation, keep. Crew report, keep. EVA, EVA report, keep. Board, okay I think that does it there. Um, we should probably make orbit and uh, go ahead and do the low orbit science while we're here. We have enough. We have 769. The trick is that after we break orbit we need to make sure that we get back properly. So and it's gonna take a little bit more to make orbit now that we have a periapsis of a thousand kilometers instead of really close to the moon. Probably there's a lunar orbit contract though that I'm missing out on here. But we got a world's first milestone anyway. I forget what altitude was low over the moon. That should do the trick, right? All right, let's get over there. Now when exiting the sphere of influence of the moon, we can uh, do a burn over here and hopefully that'll get us back safely. We've got our margins that are a bit tight. Hopefully we don't kill Jeb here, but it's no guarantee because, you know, we've got all these uh, resources now. The issue is that it went on returning, it's helpful to be able to plot the return to make sure you actually hit the atmosphere curve. And If I do the burning correctly, I might not actually get the craft back into the atmosphere, even though it's easy enough to escape the sphere of influence of the moon. I'm not going to do all the biomes right now. Um, it says in space high. Maybe I'm not low yet, though. 
Let me see what data we have. Yeah, oh, that was all high. Okay, let's wait. I should have action group the science anyway. Okay, are we low now? Yes, we are near the moon. Keep. Crew report. Keep. EVA. Keep. Forward. All right. And it's moon space low. And it doesn't seem like they're surface biome dependent. So we'll leave that be. And let's plan to head out now. This is a little bit of an awkward orbit to try and get the craft out of. I much prefer circular orbits for this. It's not showing me the resulting orbit. I'm pretty sure we're on escape by now. There we go. Ah, oh, shucks. That's what I was afraid of. We have 300 meters per second left. That should be enough, right? To bring that periapsis down? I don't know. Fuar and oxygen is diminishing quickly. Yes, I know. It's dangerously low. Oh no, I'm gonna kill Jeb, aren't I? Hygiene schedule suspended until further notice. Jeez, that's realistic. Okay. You can really roleplay with this sort of thing. But yeah, I mean, if anything, we should have the surplus of oxygen and like the food should run out first. Oh, uh, okay. Well, that should bring us back. And I put full ablator on. We have 10 meters per second left. <laughs> but do we have enough oxygen left? Well, um, I don't know. It doesn't give me the time to periapsis right now. I don't know my orbital period. I could calculate it, but I don't know it. Um, no more oxygen. Everybody stop breathing. Oh, uh, I suffocated to death. Ah. Uh, Maybe I should have put community resource pack in after I did this mission. Well, shucks. <laughs> well, well, that's a pain in the rear end. Uh, I'm guessing I'm not going to get the science back. If I had had plotting. Oh, we're already in. Things are blowing up. That's an interesting sound they've got these days. Well, this will be instructive for other reasons. This is how Jeb always wanted to re-enter the atmosphere anyway. I shouldn't have gotten into orbit around the moon, let's face it. That was a mistake. I should have been more cautious. We should have just done a flyby and I would have had enough and it would have been okay. And it wouldn't have taken more time. <sighs> Alright, back to Space Center. So yeah, before we proceed, let's fix the things that I probably should have had at my disposal before doing that mission. Patch conics visible on map. Flight planning available. Now, now we're better suited to do that kind of mission. Plan a flag on the moon. Boy, they really uh, put a Kerbal in orbit for 30 days. Well, we've just discovered why that might be a bit of a difficulty. But we do have that ECLSS pack. I wonder if there's a better way of saying that. Um, so is that under utility? Yeah, this external ECLSS, like, I'm just gonna call it life support module. But what I was really looking for in the contracts was a rescue the Kerbal contract. And that is because, yeah, we've got a few here. We really don't want to have to hire Kerbals. Kerbals cost a lot of money to hire. 51800 I'm not going to pay 51800 to get a Kerbal. So we're just going to rescue them. 
And we've got the Probodobodai in Octo, so let me quickly build a rescue mission. Okay, well, our rescue mission is going to be configured like this. I've decided to paint it all white-ish, off-white, mostly gray, actually. And so uh, we've got our white-ish cap capsule with uh, half of its mod propellant, just in case. I'm, I'm gonna put half of its shielding. I still don't know about the Kerbal radi cumulative radiation. To look for that statistic. Is it is it in the Kerbal Crew now? No. So... Okay, um, we're not going to have Valentina in because we need the space for the Kerbal. Instead, we've got the Provodobodine Octo on top. And our heat shield has 80 ablator. And the rest of this is uh, like the standard orbital rocket, except I put a single hammer at the bottom just to give us more margin. We've got plenty of Delta V. Oodles of Delta V. But I want to make absolutely sure we get our Kerbal. And I actually haven't checked what orbit the Kerbals are going to be at, so let's take a look. I've opted to rescue Klaumund Kerman first because he was paying more, <laughs> and uh, the, uh, it, he's in an equatorial orbit, fairly standard. Um, so... Rendering Magnetopause. Okay, now, okay, so we can see the belts like this. Okay, I see. All right, so there we see the radiation belts. Very interesting. I like Tauruses. Okay, so let's hope... Let's hope Cloudmond is a pilot. SAS on, throttle is up. Ignition. Very slow ascent at this stage. Okay, and we proceed. Now, you might be shocked that I have killed Jeb this early, this early on. But honestly, I would have been very disappointed in Kerbalism if I hadn't killed Jeb this early on. Okay, uh, we'll get to it over there. We're at, we aren't actually in orbit, but when we get to it right there, we will match speeds with it and then we will be in orbit. By matching speeds, we'll get into orbit, so. We found Klaumann Kerman. Oh, it's a she. Klaumann is a she. No more electrical charge. No more food. Uh-oh. Hey, hey, hey. We, we, we're just trying to get to... Come on. Suddenly, you bust everything. Oh, no. Klaumann. Very charge. The crew is loud music again. Food reserves restored. How does that even happen? Stop giving me a heart attack. We just had a Kerbal die because of food, water, and oxygen deprivation. No, no, uh, she does have full, full food, water, and oxygen. I guess there must be a correction or something. Got nitrogen, even. We are got to be making fine maneuvers at this point, so I'm going to thrust limit that. Well, that should be good enough. All right, Clamond. EVA. I should have rotated the rescue craft so that the hatch was on the right side. Okay, grab and board. All right, Klaman's in. Oh, I forgot to check. Is she a pilot or not? She is. Excellent. We have our Jeb replacement, folks. Okay. Deorbiting. Hmm. I hope I haven't brought her down on the mountains. We'll see. We will see. Okay, let's ditch the service module. We don't want to do that at the same time as deploying the parachute. I think Cloudman's going to end up in the water over here somewhere. We'll see. Okay, we are through the worst of it. We have communication back. Plenty of ablator left, of course. And parachute deployment. Okay. 
recover vessel. And we have done our first rescue contract. And uh, Clawman is ready at level 1, so good times. I guess we should try the moon mission again, huh? But we've already done the moon flyby. It already gave us that. Oh, but we've got to explore the moon here. It says, gather scientific data from the moon, return to Kerbin from order of orbit of the moon, and from flyby of the moon. Yeah, returning to Kerbin is sort of an important thing. It didn't really mention that on the previous occasion, did it? Uh, so, okay, so we need to do this now. Yep. Okay, well, I was expecting this external life support module to be like 1.25 meters. It sure looks like that in the picture, and its mass is 0.45 tons. But when you pull it out here, it's tiny. Though, I suppose I could put it like that. Um, put this here. Sort of smooth it out. Maybe pull that down. Hold on. We could do something like this, you know. And I could make it neater. But... Yeah, with it being so heavy, though, I don't really want to put it on top of the capsule. I don't know about putting that uh, life support module at the top there, though that's certainly the most convenient place. Now, I know what you're thinking. We should probably use a service module, right? Right? That makes sense. That's what service modules are for. Do we have one? Yes, we do. Service bay 0.1 tons, but you can see we're now getting to the point where this is going to get a little bit heavy. Uh, well, there's got to be some clipping at the top and bottom, but I suppose that's alright, but now we've got a part count issue. Hmm. I wish we could just have, instead of this huge, uh, this heavy module, just have a little bit more food, water, and oxygen. But that does not seem to be an option. This has all sorts of business that we don't need. I don't need an additional fuel cell or the additional pressure control or scrubber or anything like that. I really just want more food, water, and oxygen. You would think that that would be pretty low tech. But then again, you would think that other things would be pretty low tech too, so you can't really say. So we're gonna have to take the risk, but now at least we have flight planning so that I can figure it out ahead of time instead of dooming the Kerbal. And the Kerbal that we are potentially going to doom will be Valentina. Valentina has seniority. So Moon 2 in this case. Not that we've made any changes to it, but let's give it a go. Okay, let's be a bit more careful this time. Throttle up, SAS on, and launch. This time I'm going to take a look at how much food, water, and oxygen we use on the way out to gauge whether we can actually stay in orbit around the moon or whether we should just come back after a flyby. Probably we're going to just come back after a quick flyby instead of using the fuel to make orbit, just to be safe. Even though now we can do plotting, so it's probably not going to be a problem getting back accurately. Well, we still got uh, Cloudman's debris there. That's a bit annoying. Okay, staging. Let's see, where's the moon? There's the moon. We could probably just burn directly. Yeah, I think we can just keep burning. Or that might have been a bad plan. This double encounter is not going to work right, is it? That's in seven days. And we know we only have five days worth. Let's just do this flyby instead of trying to make things too complicated this time. Oh my god. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, come on, I see it. There! A triple flyby. Four hours, seven days, 42 days. No, still not gonna be good for us. Let's just do one. Taking a look at the contract parameters, scientific data from, from the moon, 
return to Kerbin from orbit and return from a flyby. And I think I'm just going to do the flyby with Valentina this time because we have a bad correction because I didn't do a certain thing right. But what I would like to do is have the resulting periapsis be fairly low. And we'll just keep the moon periapsis loose this time. We see that periapsis in two days, so that seems like a good idea. That'll be safe. I'm, I'm just going for safe this time. I already did something that wasn't very safe, which was trying to do the continuous burn to the moon. And that didn't pan out. I should just plot it. That'll do the trick. I mean, we've got an encounter. It's the barest sort of encounter, but it didn't really say anything about how close we needed to be, right? Nope. Okay, let's go to the moon. We're good again. Okay, after one hour, we've used six units of oxygen. Okay, so that's 30 hours worth of oxygen right there. And that's five days because the Kerbin day is six hours. So that makes sense. But I'll keep that in mind, six units of oxygen per hour. It, it's interesting. It seems like the Kerbals consume water and food in chunks, not continuously like the oxygen. So you see a chunk of water got taken and another chunk and then a chunk of food. That's nice. That's realistic, of course. In a way, that's... I mean, obviously that's more realistic than how attack life support does it. Um, the only question I have here is, you know, waste disposal and all that. And of course that's important for recycling, you know. Eventually we would like to recycle the wastewater, for instance. And I'm, I know that that's a feature in Kerbalism, but we don't have that visible here right now. Okay, so we are in the, the moon's SOI. Let's do some science that we already did with Jeb, but we didn't actually recover. Keep experiments. We're only doing the high lunar science this time. No more food on moon two? What? No more aqua? What? What? Okay, I'm confused. Okay, this, this, there is something wrong here. First of all, it said that we didn't have any food, water, and oxygen left. And then it restored all of them to full instead of the partial. We had already used up some food, water, and oxygen, obviously. So there does seem to be some bugginess here. Potentially because we did the EVA? Not sure. Okay, so retro burn now. It's probably a bit too steep. Let's go a little bit higher than that. 25 kilometers sounds fine to me. Okay, coming back home. And separation. Okay, please don't hit the mountains. Please don't hit the mountains. I'm still not sure about the radiation, to be honest. Especially inside the capsule. We've got shielding. It doesn't say anything about... Uh, it says radiation nominal, but I'd like a number on that. Does that mean that Valentina is not getting radiation at all? I'm not sure. We only used 40 a blader coming back from the moon. It's not the steepest return from the moon possible, but... We've got some margin there. Oh, we lost the heat shield. Okay, well, anyway, we've got Valentina back. And we've got 39.2 science, but I can't see the space center anymore. Um, oh, it's just really, really dark. I think maybe it's scatterer causing a bit of a problem. Anyway, well, you know, it has been an episode of triumphs and tragedies, let's face it. And, you know, we've gotten some stuff done. We've got 74 science. We could unlock one of these technologies or save it for 
let's say space exploration does it this has this is a supply container this is what I want the, the food water and oxygen oh, wait there's no oxygen there there's oxygen here so what I want is this technology here so that we can properly store stuff and we don't need that life support module so that needs to be unlocked and probably that's going to happen with a closer moon flyby in the next episode and I guess our new recruit our rescuee will take care of that but we'll do that next time thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed this video if you did enjoy this video please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time